Welcome to my in-depth review of the Inos Caravan as made by the Fifth Wheel Company in North Wales. We've owned this caravan now for some seven months or so. I will try and be as honest as I possibly can with the very good, the okay and the not so good. Fair bit of experience, been away a lot of times this summer. I have modified our caravan, that's the one shown in the picture. Um, to give you an idea, the standard caravan looks a little bit more like this. But to give you a better idea still, here's the two of them side by side. The main exterior modifications really have been to the graphics, subtly on the side and more extensively on the front. Uh, also some extra trimming and a step on plate on the A-frame itself. However, as we go through the review, I will point out the things which are original and the things which I've changed. And where necessary, I'll give a picture or some description of what the original would have been like. So I'll try and make it as useful for those thinking of buying a standard in OS um, as possible. Of course, I say standard. There is no such thing really as a standard in OS because everyone is made to order with a certain amount of uh, customer choice available on each and every one built. So before we start the exciting live action part of this uh, review and tour, I thought I'd give a bit of background. And the first thing is, why do this review at all? Well, two reasons. Firstly, when we discovered and began looking at the idea of buying in Inos, we couldn't find any other reviews that were sort of less than 10 years old. And also because I've been asked to by people who visited my website. The thing about this particular caravan is there are a number of things which make it stand out from the crowd. Most obvious is the slide out and it's a pretty big slide out at that and is now pretty much unique amongst UK caravans and of course secondly there's the price. Our Inos ordered autumn 2021 with all of the factory fitted options we specified came to an eye-watering £72,000. Yeah I know that's what we thought as well. That is an enormous number. A smaller number, luckily, is when it comes to the caravan's width. It's seven foot six wide. It's a standard width. It's not an eight foot caravan, which makes storage and towing that little bit easier. That really was the only smaller number I could actually find. Everything else is pretty big. As far as length goes, it's the seven metres, which is the maximum allowed uh, in the UK for caravan body length for a normal tow vehicle, that is. Um, it looks slightly shorter than that because it is tall um, and being tall obviously makes the optical illusion looking slightly shorter but it's the same length as pretty much every other UK twin axle caravan. What is longer is the A-frame that's because it doesn't use the same chassis as the other UK caravans. Most UK twin axle caravans use an Alco 2000 kilo chassis and this means that the widest possible number of different tow cars can manage to pull it. If you're going to build an Inos caravan with the thicker body construction, with the slide out and the mechanism to go with that, with the interior built much more solidly than in a normal caravan, and to have a large payload, there is no way you can do that all within 2,000 kilos. So they haven't even tried. This caravan is a 2,800 kilo chassis, which will immediately, of course, limit the number of vehicles that can tow it. On the plus side, is the um, payload and that's after taking into account all the optional extras which doesn't normally happen with the caravan being weighed is that still gives us 400 kilos of real payload unless you're like me who does drill holes in these caravans you aren't going to see one major difference between the construction of an inos caravan and a normal caravan this picture shows the section that's the lower one from a top end mainstream caravan um, composite skins and polystyrene core above it is a wall section from the Inos um, showing a much thicker much more dense core quite a difference right then let's begin uh, before we get stuck in properly, just a quick note on security. There are a number of security devices for this caravan. 
uh, some obvious, some less obvious, and some verging on what I'd call quite sneaky. Um, enough said. Okay, not standard on the caravan rear is the black graphic. Um, neither standard is the high-level camera. You can get um, a factory option camera with a little aerial that looks a bit like this. What was a surprise is the high-level brake light. Uh, that was a cost option, which for a caravan of this price, I don't really think is on. As far as the construction is concerned, the main panel here is the same as the rest of the body, as in a sandwich composite panel, very, very strong. The glass fibre, which trims all four sides of it, is also very, very strong, which therefore obviously is a very good thing. The rear lights are all LED. Not so good is the sealant, which is used all across the exterior of this caravan to sort of join all these little panels and edging trims. Very visible. It's been applied very neatly, but it's a Sikaflex type of material. So yes, it will stay flexible, but it also stays very, very soft, a bit like putty. So it's easy to actually dent if you're not careful. Also, it attracts dirt like there's no tomorrow and it's very difficult to clean requiring specialist cleaners to get it really clean on some occasions. And what's even worse is I have seen a caravan only three years old, which has black mould growing in this sealant. So I think in my case, well, I've already bought um, a very good quality breathable cover, and I shall also, end of every season, wipe the sealant down with some form of disinfectant just to discourage any mould from taking hold. OK, we'll move around to the uh, offside and you'll see immediately the slide out is in. This is so I can actually you know, not bash my head and get a better view of the side of the caravan. Uh, we'll start at the very back and this is where the water inlet is, both one of mine, but also the standard water inlet. So I'll deal with the standard water inlet first. It's here. It's a different inlet in that it's simply uh, like a hose connector. It isn't a powered inlet. What you will have is pressure reduction on the inside, so you can plug mains on a service pitch straight into the caravan here. You can also um, use it to fill the onboard tank. You can run direct from the aquil as well using the onboard pump. Depending what you plan to do, there are a series of manual valves inside this locker. That isn't really a very good idea from my point of view because it means to change any of these over means going outside the caravan and round the back to do it. I think if they really wanted to, they could put a panel on the inside above the toilet where you could actually reach these from inside the caravan. Be a bit more convenient. Mine obviously has two of these because I've got a twin aqua roll auto changeover system. So when one's empty, the other one takes over automatically. But that's something which I've done myself. So therefore, it isn't really an option. So I won't do any further with that. So you normally get one in just here. Again, a factory option which we haven't gone for is an external shower point which sits just above it. With regard to the um, onboard water tank, it is about 70 litres, I believe. It's a very big one um, for a caravan. It sits behind the rear axles below the floor, so it is well insulated. And one quite handy feature is, is there is rigid 32 millimeter uh, drain with a ball valve on that because you won't really want to be carrying 70 kilograms of water sloshing around behind your rear axle when you're towing a caravan. Normally also here you will get the grey water outlet which is a bit further forward. That is part end of the system which is all 32 mil so therefore it does drain very well without any issues. Uh, mine is different and I'll get onto that in a minute or two. So that's the water system so far. You'll notice above the uh, locker door is the uh, exhaust for the Alder 3020 heating system. The actual Alder 3020 system is not here, it's actually under the bed in the main caravan just beneath the slide out. If we uh, open the locker door, this is obviously the access to the toilet cassette. It's also where I mentioned before where you would normally access the various levers to change around the water system. Um, as I said before, mine is different, so I have a number of my own relays and controls and any valve changing is done through a motorised valve. So I need to come outside to do any changeovers, but mine is different anyway. 
what is quite good is there's room in here for the um, for toilet chemicals, which is always very handy. What wasn't brilliant is I noticed getting the cassette in and out was quite difficult. And it turns out that the actual locker door is slightly too high, as in high on the side of the caravan rather than being too tall. Um, I've modified mine to make it work properly. Um, I've told the factory about it. So hopefully if you buy one sort of the one of the newer ones, this will have been rectified. But if you have a real difficulty wriggling your cassette out, that's what the problem is. I guess it's just one of those things you get from a very low production sort of small company. You get these quirks, but this one we've overcome without too much difficulty. So moving on, we uh, go past the uh, main hookup inlet. Now down here you can see, this is the actual I mentioned before, the 32mm uh, outlet with ball valve from the water tank for draining down. We get to the uh, wheel arches, this is all glass fibre trimmed. The uh, wheel box itself is stainless steel, which is a nice touch, I have to confess. Be being metal, it is also on the inside insulated to prevent condensation. We have the quad motor mover system. Getting this caravan to where it stays, we couldn't manage without it. And in actual fact, given the weight of these caravans, there aren't any grab handles on the rear or the front, mainly because you wouldn't be able to move it anyway. So this really is one of those options which I think most people would probably have. Also, we've got the ENP hydraulic full levelling system. And on this caravan, I, I wouldn't really regard this as an option. You have to pay for it as an extra, but really you should have this for a number of reasons. Obviously, yes, it makes levelling that much easier. Also, because the caravan has a slide out, centre of gravity obviously is further to one side than when towing. It makes the whole thing feel really, really solid, like being in a house rather than a caravan or a motorhome. But another very good reason for having the ENP fitted is for your health and safety. Because when we picked up this caravan, in the front was a bottle jack. No instructions, no mounted bracket on the chassis, just a bottle jack. So anyone who knows about um, bottle jacks and Alco chassis is that really if you needed to change a wheel on this, it's a recipe for possible injury and or damage or possibly even worse. So the ENP does allow you to change a wheel without any difficulty and I really would recommend that if you want one of these, you have this fitted. With regard to wheel locks, um, you can't have the Alco wheel lock. Um, I know you can get a retrofit mounting, but the thing is, these particular wheels, there isn't um, a lozenge that actually fits them. So we don't use the Alco wheel lock, which does mean more expensive in terms of insurance. But it also means taking the wheel locks off, which are actually on the far side, is very, very quick and very, very simple. So immediately you can also see where the fridge is. This external TV point actually is an inlet, another option. In our case, it's so we can actually plug into a site bollard or possibly an external satellite dish. We're still not convinced about the idea of a satellite dish for the caravan itself. That one we're still considering. Moving forward, here on ours is the main grey water outlet. I said before, on the standard caravan, it's at the rear. Ours is up here because ours was the prototype caravan to have the first onboard grey water tank, um, which actually sits beneath the, um, the entrance door. And that's why our inlet is now up at the front. Um, again, it has a ball valve on it. The grey water tank fitted to this caravan is not huge. It's only about 35 litres. But what it does mean is we can actually treat the caravan a bit more like a motorhome. We could put some water in the um, main holding tank, use the caravan, empty it into the grey water tank. And when we get onto site, then empty it into our waste master. Even using the caravan conventionally, it's quite handy because um, if someone's using the shower, for example, or what anything else, you can just close the ball valve. They can just carry on doing whatever they're doing. If it needs to fill the grey water tank, it will. And when you then put back the um, waste master, it'll just basically run into that. In my particular case, I've also added um, a level um, indicator in the waste master, which works on the control panel in the caravan to tell me if it's nearly full. 
Moving forward, here is the uh, front offside locker. This locker goes all the way through uh, underneath the front bench seat. In here, we've got actually sort of quite a lot, really. We've got sort of the two stools, two tabletops, Isabella stuff, and the Isabella footrests as well. And um, it actually is very useful to have a locker on this side just here. OK, moving around to the front. Just to point out the things which I have added, uh, the graphics from the window, as mentioned before, is, is mine. On the A-frame, uh, this black plastic cover is in place normally. This piece of plastic and the trims under here, I have added. I've also added the aluminium tread plate on the uh, top of the A-frame. The reason it goes up over the front of the caravan is aesthetically for two reasons. Uh, one is, I think it looks quite nice, and two is this particular part of the trimming panel behind it was not particularly well finished, I have to say. And a number of Inos caravans I've seen, this has been probably the least well finished of the trim, so I thought I'd just hide it. Obviously, you have uh, ATC as standard, and you also get the uh, the Alco stabilizing hitch. And on these caravans, as standard, unusually for these, you actually get the Alco premium jockey wheel with the weight gauge on it. Uh, quick note of caution, this gauge is only ever accurate when the caravan is absolutely level on its suspension. And also, it only measures the weight at the jockey wheel, not at the hitch. There's a formula to work it out properly, but other than that, the fact that it's actually sprung, the fact that it has a very nice wide tyre, does mean it goes across bad surfaces better than many other jockey wheels. So definitely worth having with or without the actual uh, weight gauge. The front locker isn't gas assisted. It isn't an, on any fancy mechanism. But in actual fact, this isn't a problem because it, it opens all the way and is completely out of your way getting access into the locker. So that actually is quite a good thing. Uh, not so good is if it's been raining, is all the water will simply pour straight into the front locker. So that's why I've added this piece of rubber. In terms of the locker itself, um, the auto gas changeover, I believe, is standard. And it is nice and roomy with a nice solid floor, obviously with uh, ventilation holes for the gas system. In our case, because the spare wheel normally sits where our grey water tank is, the spare wheel is in the front locker. Not really a bad thing because these can be quite nose light from the factory, these caravans. But that also means you can pile loads of stuff into the um, this front locker and the locker behind or underneath the, um, the front seats. Uh, not unlike some older Baileys, the um, front of the caravan is in fact the main bodywork which folds down off the roof. It's all one piece. So again, this is all nice and strong. Again, the trimming each side is nice thick glass fibre, which is also quite strong. Very unusually for modern caravans, it's a single front window, which is normally reserved for budget models. Um, this clearly isn't a budget model, but in actual fact, within this caravan and this kind of layout, it, it works perfectly well. It's just less fiddly and less complicated than having three windows. So I don't regard this as a problem. Right, and finally round to the uh, near side. So at the front, we have the almost now universal um, gas barbecue point and then the um, front side locker. Uh, the front part of this goes all the way through to the far side and uh, the back part of it doesn't but it's still pretty deep which is very useful indeed and in here we have the um, the two bags of our Thule, it is pronounced Thule, panorama room to make a full awning under our um, electric awning on the top and these sit in here quite nicely they are heavy but in this caravan that's not a problem uh, I've also, as you can see, got step ladders because it is a very tall caravan and these come in remarkably handy in this particular case. Here I've got my two Acarol, um high pressure pumps and what you can't see, but this behind there, you'll see it from the inside, is a really good space for a shoe locker. Moving back, we have the main entrance door, um, 
you'll notice how high the door is from the ground just to reinforce the how tall the Inos caravan is and just a point to note is that this is a Hartal door uh, the newer caravans once built since this one have a Lippert door which does look different with a slightly different mechanism it isn't a question of choosing which door you want the, this door is no longer available so the new ones will have a different door just worth bearing in mind uh, looking up is a factory option of roof awning these come in various lengths. Um, we've gone for quite a modest three metre length awning. And the reason we've chosen it that size and where it is, is when we actually use the panorama room awning, is the sides come down and don't come across any windows or lockers or the like. And that works for us. Also paid to have the electric option. And also, which is not normally available, is I've made it remote control. Speaking of awnings, because we always plan to use the roof awning in its associated panorama room, we didn't have an awning rail fitted. The Inos does come with an awning rail, but it's not integrated into the actual structure. It's sort of a screw on one which goes on afterwards. And compared to some of the more mass produced models, it is a bit clumsy looking in our opinion. So we actually opted to do without that. You can also have, if you want one, a short front awning rail down the offside, which allows you to fit um, a towing cover. The standard caravan does come with an awning light, but because our roof awning incorporates a full length LED strip light, we chose not to have that standard awning light fitted. Um, one thing that's not brilliant about the original is you can only turn on the awning light using the switch on the inside. It doesn't come on, for example, when you turn off the alarm or when you're approaching the caravan. So I have modified ours so it now does come on with the locking and unlocking. And on that point, just the locks on the doors, the door's really more of a motorhome door. It's got twin catches and it is remote locking. This is uh, an external 240 uh, volt outlet. Um, you can have different variations of this to include 12 volts and aerial um, outlets as well, if you wish. And they can move this around to a degree because obviously that is a cost option and they will try and sort of tailor it to what you want. Moving further back now we have the, uh, the rear near side locker. Um, this has a surprise because not only does it have the uh, main switch for the motor movers, not a surprise, it also has space for not one but two full size leisure batteries. So if you are particularly keen on doing a bit of um, off gridding this may well be of interest to you. And again, of course, because of the weight and payload of this caravan, extra batteries are less of a problem in the Yenos than they would be in some other caravans. So that brings us to the end of part one of this uh, in-depth review. I've got to stop there because my computer can't take any more of this. So there will be a part two following very shortly which will cover the interior of the Inos caravan and some conclusions. So hope you enjoyed watching that one as well.